Look at the picture. See the skull. Visible Frankenstein controls the Brain Thoughts broadcasting radio, the Frankenstein earphone radio, the latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls. controls. What's good, everybody? Happy Saturnalia-associated holidays. How's it going? Ho, 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 et cetera. Ho, ho, homeless. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. And the little kid goes, ah! It's from a Christmas story. There was, um, that is a, you know what? We just did Santa pictures with uh, the tiny little babby, and she was yeah. very, very good. She's... I saw the picture. She's just like, Whatever. She was just like, well, Santa. what's going on? I have Who no idea what's going on. She's just young enough to not be existentially terrified by the tremendous bearded fat man. Yeah. <laughs> I always remember Santa having bad breath whenever I went to see Santa. He always had bad breath. <laughs> well, now you know it smells like whiskey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, now I have an identification for that smell. And but it was, Santa always smells like that. It was Mad Dog 2020. I always wonder why Santa had that weird anklet that had the glowing red light on it. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. It was his, uh, it's like Rudolph's nose, but on his yeah. ankle. This is to let my elves know where I am at all times. <laughs> <laughs> In case there's a Christmas emergency. Rudolph, with your house arrest bracelet, will you guide my sleigh tonight? See, that's why he drives his fucking sleigh, too. He's not allowed to operate a vehicle. Yeah. I, I'm not allowed to be Santa outside the state of Pennsylvania right now. I'm a... <laughs> oh, fuck. They're very strict about that. <laughs> You know, the North Pole uh, is, uh, I, I, I got arrested for selling drywall. It was supposed to be cocaine, but it was not. <laughs> it was just drywall. It I'm, was just, a... I'm just imagining Santa uh, going down a, a chimney that is like a bust. Like he's he's breaking parole and like they've got a house set up to to, to catch him, <laughs> so he's going down the chimney like oh 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 oh, <laughs> he's making an escape, he's going up the chimney, <laughs> scrambling at it like a worry, raccoon. He had the cookies and he we made sure he doesn't have his insulin. We got an elf on the inside. <laughs> no. I'm going to make sure I keep a candy cane in my rectal cavity to carve into a shiv later to keep the Aryan Brotherhood at bay. <laughs> the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I'm one fourteenth Mexican, and they, would, <laughs> and they, they they found out about it, and they're really strict about their purity. Oh my Turns God. out, elf counts as an ethnic group, and they don't <laughs> like that. Speaking of, this is a great transition into Christmas stuff because oh, no. we've we've been watching a bunch of Christmas movies to sort of get into the spirit mm-hmm. and. Before Wonderful. we get into the holiday spirit, Taylor, who are we? I'm Santa Claus, and I'm under house arrest. I forgot, this is Frankenstein Control, that's who we are. Yeah. I'm Taylor. To my left is Ada. I'm Ada, and I'm Moonlight as Mrs. Claus, and I'm the one that puts uh, downers in Santa's milk so he doesn't go feral and rip the faces off the children. That fucking explains a lot, actually, why I feel so chill right now. But to my right, as always, is Beer Eye. Uh, I'm Beer Eye, also known as No Doze the Elf, who, uh, <laughs> there was a drug dealer on uh, Breaking Bad named No Doze. Oh, uh, I thought said No Doge. No, no, No like Doge. The coin. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm the elf who swapped out the cocaine for uh, Santa's, uh, the shipment of drywall that he uh, got caught selling to that undercover DEA agent and now so has to wear So when you say selling the... drywall, do you mean like like selling like bags of powder that's actually just the ground up... Bits of drywall. You know, and... The ground up bits of drywall and you call it cocaine Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you get murdered by the cartel you're trying to sell it to. Mm. Oh man, Santa's head is on a turtle. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> that was Danny Trejo. <laughs> I'm just, Santa Trejo. I'm just imagining, uh, like, like a stereotype, like the an elf from uh, the Rudolph stop motion. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he, he's doing the whole like thing that Hank does, oh, where, yeah, where he's, he's running <laughs> around disorienting around and, all disoriented. and uh, they got the tinnitus. <laughs> the uh, current traumatic stress disorder instead of uh, yeah <laughs> post traumatic stress. <laughs> um, Danny Trejo Santa sounds like it'd be awesome. That actually, I'm surprised that that hasn't been a thing at some point. That sounds like I fodder, feel like it has. If I'm being honest, it sounds like fodder for an SNL skit. It really uh, does. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not Christmas. funny anymore. Yeah, it really does. It ho ho ho, man! It goes on for like 15 years, longer than it should because it's an yeah. SNL skit. 
<laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. Christmas I... movies and um... Christmas movies. That's right. Put the cookie down. <laughs> so so Lissa uh, watches the uh, Harry Potter movies around the holidays because mm. they feel Christmassy, and she used to watch them when she went up um, to see her her grandparents in Michigan as a as a wee baby child. Uh, she would watch the Harry Potter movies at Christmas time, and so she associates them with this time of year. So we've been watching them because they're fun, and I actually uh-huh. haven't seen them in a while. And uh, she also just did the um, – there's a immersive Harry Potter experience at a park near us, and uh, she and uh, one of her friends just did that. Um, it's like Harry Potter LARPing? It's ba- no, it's like they made the, 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 the forest, the spooky forest outside the school – they the made one that with the a, tree what punches you? The one with the tree what punches you. Oh is it God, just a guy wait. in a bra- in like a ghillie suit that yeah, talks yeah. Just and socks you? Yeah, just a dude in a Party you. City Groot costume who beats the shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whooping willow! Oh, fuck, free, stop! <laughs> and he steals your car, just like in the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to steal a lot of cars. It's 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 kind of, uh, it's impressive how quickly and how much he gets stolen. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we've been watching that, and, and it, I've actually not engaged with the Harry Potter movies in a really long time, and I used to really like Harry Potter stuff. She got me a uh, a dark mark patch to sew onto like my hoodie or something because I like the I like the villains and everything. You know, I always like yeah. the bad guy characters. But now I was like ruminating on it. and I was like, I, I hate how like right wing ideology resurfaced in our society, and now I have a frame of reference for what those people are like. Mm. And I'm like, damn it! Like now that a grown up. Now I'm like I used to be all like oh I'm I'm the evil character because evil is sexy and cool and now I'm like I don't want to be a magical proud boy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, that's okay. The good guys endorse slavery too, so it's all right. Ooh, yeah. Oh boy. Well, hey. we were we were watching the um, the fourth movie last night, which is the the one with the Cedric Diggory and all that. And they they were, it starts with them going to the Quidditch World Cup and the Death Eaters interrupted by marching through with their tiki torches and their fucking clan robes. And I was like, <laughs> oh boy, this is. Oh boy, this is uh, oh, 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 a little boy, too this, real. This feels a little bit different now, and the attack had just dispersed, and people were like running out of the way of the uh, the torch wielding, mask wearing, pointy robe wearing Death Eaters, and I was like, and then a Dodge Charger just slams no, right no. through. <laughs> the, yeah, it's a, it's a Ron Weasley's yeah. frying car, plows <laughs> and everybody. <laughs> No, fucking, you remember the time that uh, slavery was introduced and Hermione was like, this is kind of fucked up. And everyone's like, Hermione, you're so silly. They want to be slaves. And they look right at the camera and they go, zippity doo da." <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> Harry Potter. Uh, yeah, that, that part's not fantasy. That was that was real. That's what people use to justify it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Wizarding World actually does have a front business in the Muggle one, and it's just the Nestle Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> Nestle is run by Death Eaters. Yes. Dumbledore runs it. Dude, living in the Wizarding World would fucking suck ass. It really if you would. think about it. Like, just going to school is such a colossal pain in the fucking ass. Like, kids are getting goddamn their ankles twisted and their their like limbs chopped off by the moving stairs every day mm. and then double doors just like, it's because it's funny <laughs> <laughs> we need the children to die so the school can have more ghosts yeah. <laughs> that dumbledore dies after the se- the third uh, the no the th- <laughs> <laughs> it's more funny to imitate this one. It is more funny. It is objectively more funny to imitate that Dumbledore because the other one's too intense. The other Dumbledore just sounds like this, and that's hey. it. And he's like, no, 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 you need funny Dumbledore. <laughs> How did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> 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 hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and Edward Cullen's in that movie. He is. He was known oh, yeah. for being Cedric before the vampire. Mm-hmm. It was pre Twilight. Cedric the Entertainer. Cedric the Entertainer, <laughs> along <true>. with Sinbad. <laughs> Him in his big Ill- ill-fitting suit. He shows up at the the Triwizard Cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his ill-fitting suit. Look at all these motherfuckers flying around. <laughs> oh! It's it's by uh, the, a bludger. The, the, the bludger. That's what they're called. Yeah. I was about to say the snitch. Yes, that's, that's the little golden one. What flies around? There's uh, another show we've been watching uh, called Owl House on the mm. Disney Channel. Hey! That's a good one. That's a real good show. I've heard it's good. I've heard it's good. It's real good. And there's a joke about Quidditch in it where um they they like the good guy characters bust their ass and like almost win the game and they're like oh no the bad guy character characters just caught the, the snitch equivalent they win immediately and uh, the main character loose is like there's no reason to watch any of the other players that's such a stupid rule <laughs> 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 
It's like, true. Literally nothing else in the game matters but catching that stupid ball. It's like the yeah. only thing you would have to keep your eye on. <laughs> um, no, but uh, we've we've been we've been trying to get into the the, the Christmas. Crimba spirit over at our place. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm deep into Christmas. I'm like low key deep into Christmas spirit this mm, year. You, like when I go, when I drive around in my car, I fucking put on Christmas music. You now. jingle balls yeah. deep in the Christmas. I'm spirit. jingle balls deep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I don't know. Like uh, anytime anybody wants to watch a Christmas movie, I'm like fuck yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Like, I'm vibing. I'm, I'm vibing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I just I like going outside and just looking at all the lights. I don't know something about it this year. I guess I'm getting old. No, it feels good. It, that's 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 the that's what I'm trying to cultivate. It's just this been a very stressful year, uh, and a lot of shit has happened. But that's been true of the last all of them. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so, so. Oh wait, did I, did I say I had COVID? <laughs> oh yeah, you did. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, I got COVID. And I coughed on everybody, and only a few of them got sick. Only one of them died. Only one of them died. <laughs> His name is Herbert. We, we don't talk like him. about him no more. He's yeah. stupid. He We're glad lot, he's dead. He would always insist that everybody watch when he does a flip. Mm. Mm-hmm. No, I'm glad he's dead. He was always trying to watch finger family videos. <laughs> they're, just, they're just weird. We would try to finger my family. <laughs> I say, Herbert, stop. <laughs> We've, you're watching, you're watching speaking Christmas of finger movies. family, are you are you prepared for that, Bri? Are you prepared for the no, ending, don't do that for, oh. for the ending onslaught of 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 baby television? There uh, will be none of that. The good. Scene, the thing is, I am an adult and I have control over what I put in front of my child. And don't I'm just going give to, her an iPad until she's like ten. I'm please. going to we yeah. We're going to do all of that stuff, and I'm going to selectively just not show her awful content. Yeah. I'm I, I pay for enough streaming services that have all the <laughs> shit that I liked when I was a kid, so that's yeah. what we're going to be watching. Yeah, by the time she's in kindergarten or something, I'm sure there'll there'll be some new uh some new evolved form of Coco Melon or yeah. whatever. We will probably have Coco to relent. Chanel? Yeah. Coco Chanel. It's Teletubbies. Oh, but, okay. but stupider. <laughs> We're probably going to have to cool. relent at the point when um she starts having when she starts needing the same frames of reference as other kids. That's what I was yeah. just about to bring up. I was gonna be like, that's you know, like I'm kind of worried about that kind of mindset yeah. of like I'm gonna raise my kids on things that made me the person who I am today, and like their their kids are not gonna know what the yeah. fuck anything is. No, once once she yeah. starts seeing other kids and spending time with them, and like needs to have a frame of reference for some of mm-hmm. this other stuff, we'll roll into little. Of course, we're gonna be right. flexible about it, but yeah. just, just gonna try to steer her away from the awful shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> please, please don't get your four year old. Addicted to Baby Shark and Finger Family. I so the Baby Shark thing. Lissa played a TikTok that had that in it, and mm-hmm. it was less than a month ago. And I was like, I have gone this entire time without knowing what that song sounds like. I'm really? Well aware, well aware of the memes. How did well you aware never of the hear it? Because I tried very, very, I've, very, very hard. I can relate. I was kind of late to that party as well. Huh. Like it was I, already well and fully out of vogue by the time I actually heard the song, and I was like. Oh, oh! This must be that baby shark song I've heard so much yeah. about. Okay, man, it's really fucking annoying. I, My, I was uh, like, I've gone this far without knowing what that sounds like. Why? Why did you change that for me? <laughs> I, I knew about baby shark before it was cool. <laughs> well, I knew uh, about it. I just point. I just pointedly tried very hard not to hear the actual song. And yeah. if I clicked into anything that looked like it was going to have it, I closed that window and muted that shit. Fast. My my mom works with uh, pretty young kids. Yeah. So she, there was some day where she was showing me a whole bunch of the uh, the the videos that like are appropriate for that age group. Mm-hmm. There was like I'm pretty sure she showed me that, and she showed me another one with like like a star or an owl or something, and like I it like it was genuinely cute. And then like years later, I, I like saw like plushes of the characters, and I'm like, how does this stuff have this kind of longevity? Mm-hmm. Cause it's it's, it's so form, weird. It's when your mind is it's, like forming, like I guess. It, it creates a like it gets. It's like putting time capsules in the foundation of a. No, building. it's not me remembering it. It's the fact that like it existed. Oh. And uh, existed for so long, and then was popular. Mm. Like oh. like Baby Shark has been around for. For years, I'm pretty sure I was still living with my parents when she showed me that. Wow. Whoa! So like that's that's over seven years ago. Every time I would only see Baby Shop referenced, it was in text. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so every time I saw somebody referencing it, I would just read it as Baby Shark Doody 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 from fucking Invader Zim. Zim. Yeah. <laughs> good old good old girl. Good old Zim. 
Um, did the guy who voiced Zim, we were getting wildly off Christmas. Is this Ralph here, Bakshi, go on. I was going to say, did, did Ralph Bakshi voice, um, <laughs> I know it wasn't, uh, did, did, did Ralph Bakshi voice the, uh, the, the brown beaver on Angry Beavers? Yes. yes. Okay. I yeah, thought it was as well as, guy, uh, yeah. uh, Billy from Billy and Mandy. Mm-hmm. That's obvious. Yeah. Is, uh, and the kid from Psychonauts. Yes. Okay. See, I never played Psychonauts. Mm, it's fun. It's a good game. That's, I've heard nothing but good things about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the second one was also really good. I watched Jen play it, but it kind of like petered out towards the end. Mm. Like it, it kind of seemed like, like, all right, we're ready to release this game in a month. And they're like, oh, oh. it releases in a week. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of unfinished games, um, we were dunking on the uh, the new Pokemon title that's uh-huh. oddly unfinished, and Lissa was showing me some stuff from it, and she was showing me some of the overworld stuff where, well, the, the, the particular TikTok she was showing me was somebody pulling up on their Pokemon motorcycle to a gas station, and there were two other people on their Pokemon motorcycles, and they were, in fact, floating off of them backwards instead of sitting <laughs> on them properly as you were supposed to. It's like Elden Ring. Yeah, uh, like when we play co-op Elden Ring. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. That's a user-created mod yeah. instead of... Yeah. Uh, that, that's you know, wrong because somebody's fucking with it. <laughs> that's wrong because it's not supposed to be working that way instead of operating as intended and made by a billion-dollar corporation. Yeah. Well, for, for context, there's this... isn't this, embarrassing at all for we've, them. We've been playing this... Uh, a modded Elden Ring that gives you seamless co-op. So mm. instead of like seamless, yeah. So instead of uh, mostly seamless, mostly seamless. Uh, as in like in the base game, you you like can only summon a friend in like certain areas, and they can't just follow you wh- wherever. Like you can't warp once you summon someone. Mm. But this mod makes it so it's like you're playing single player, but there's also someone right next to you that is also playing with you. Oh, cool. So See, that's the way to do it. You just can just warp around. It's, it's, with your friends that's the awesome. There are no mm-hmm. limits, but there are also, also are some glitches where uh, a lot of times when you get on torrent, the, the, uh, horse. the, the yeah, the horse, uh, the horse is not visible, so <laughs> you're just shooting I'll around. I'll just see Taylor and Jen just shooting around, floating three feet off the air with their legs spread. <laughs> <laughs> the, That's really funny. I was actually really amazed in the Pokemon thing. You know, I was like, goofy glitch, notwithstanding. There's fucking motorcycles for you to ride around. What? But it lo- looks like your Pokemon. Unless it was like, yeah. yeah, it is your Pokemon. And I was like, why the fuck did they just put motorcycles in the game for you? You to know use? what's you know what's fucking stupid? The Yu-Gi-Oh! Five Ds is the Pokemon has wheels. Yes, it's got a wheel in its chest and it crotch and it runs on its on its on its legs it doesn't use the wheels for locomotion that's fucked it's so stupid and the, well the, the way it happened was i was like but the, is that a motorcycle is that a pokemon this is like it's your pokemon and i was like but that's but but why why don't they just put motorcycles in this like it's your pokemon brian you know it's, it's your pokemon that's it's, it's it's great and there's just a long pause and she's like no it's stupid <laughs> <laughs> well i guess from a gameplay issue it's it's like you can put a Pokemon in a ball and yeah. walk it around with you. You can't really do that with a motorcycle. Boy. But, I mean, except for the fact that you can do that with a fucking bike in every game. It's just in your pouch. Yeah, it's why. So, like, why not? Why not? Why not just have them be it's a It's a thing. video game. You can do whatever the fuck you, you want. You really could. Well. You can propel yourself on one jet boot like Stan. He's <laughs> <laughs> right, doing the MC Hammer dance with the jet boot. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, much like... Uh, the, these movies that I'm about to describe. This episode has gone on, d- despite nominally being our Christmas one, we've gone on a very long time already without getting into any Christmas shit. We had to complain about Pokemon and Harry Potter. We yeah. did, but I was going to say that has something very much in common with a lot of the Christmas movies that we have tried, where like we'll be like 40 minutes in and not a damn Christmas thing has happened yet. <laughs> this, is like, this was supposed to be a Christmas movie. Yeah. I don't care what the fuck they're talking about here. Like I have not seen a single Christmas tree or ornament or a damn Damn thing. I ain't seen one fucking elf. There, there ain't even any evidence this takes place in December. <laughs> uh, you know, I saw a pop tree, th- God damn it. One more brief tangent. Uh, you know what movie is technically a Christmas movie because it takes, takes time at around Christmas? No, American Psycho. Really? Oh, yeah, oh it, it takes it takes place uh, within like within December, like before and after Christmas. No, oh, my God. Speaking of which, I bought the book. Oh! <laughs> Deck the halls with the guy Wait, you oh, asked. And I also, I also... Why does it have a picture of Kevin Spacey on the front? Uh, because Kevin Spacey is, uh... An American Psycho. An American Psycho. Oh, well, I also I mean... bought this manga by the same writer that did B-Stars, and it's... 
I've seen it twice, and as you see on the screen, it has a very graphic cover. Yeah, that's I, frightening. I, I keep seeing it. And I'm like, <sighs> looks like American Psycho. I thought it looked like Attack on <laughs> yeah. Titan. You know that scene where uh, he's he's naked and he's going ha at the camera. Yeah, and he's covered in blood. Yeah, yep. And he's got his sneakers on, despite the fact that he was just in the midst of fucking. <laughs> I mean, it's his... The know. Covered in Blood one, <laughs> yeah. you're actually conflating two different things, because I think the Covered in Blood one is when from when he hits the guy with the axe after asking him if he likes Huey Lewis in the news, and he's wearing no, uh, the bunny suit. Yeah, he, he's, he's in that one, he's wearing like a... Like a Coveralls. Ring, like a... Um, plastic poncho. Yeah, yeah. plastic poncho. Uh, <laughs> this is a scene later where he has a prostitute and, I guess, like a, a friend. Yeah. And he's like having this weird threesome. And I do remember that. In, in the midst of this, the prostitute gets up and like... Sees he's like ripping her, ripping the other woman apart underneath the bed sheets. Like there's splatters of blood coming off, and she runs. And like you see Patrick coming in, like butt naked, except for he's got socks and tennis shoes on, and he's he's covered in blood, and he's got a, an electric chainsaw <laughs> chasing after her. I know that movie's fucking wild. I love it. I know it's Patrick Bateman, mm-hmm. but I pictured Patrick Star. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a very different movie. <laughs> I'm gonna get you, SpongeBob. <laughs> Have you l- listened to Huey Lewis in the news, SpongeBob? <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe it. Look at the subtle kerning of the lettering. <laughs> My God, is that bone? <laughs> I'm gonna go cram a cat in an ATM machine. It even has a watermark. My God. <laughs> I have to go return some videotapes. <laughs> Oh, okay. At long last. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Long <laughs> last. Yeah. We really, can finally get to The Christmas Couch 2. Mm-hmm. So, we watched a Christmas movie. So, first off, we watched the Christmas movie sequel, A, Christ- uh, the, uh, the, a Christmas Story. The, oh, A Christmas, the, the, a Christmas the, Story 2. Yeah, they basically. did a sequel of the Ralphie Christmas movie. Yeah, oh. where everybody's and, like a million years older or dead. Yes, and uh, Lissa's mom, unsurprisingly, was like, you gotta watch it, it's great. So, I was like, mm, uh-huh. let's, let's check this out here. And uh, it's 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 nominally okay, but it touches the void too much. Touches the void. Uh-huh. Touches, touching the void is the term Lissa and I use for anything that forces you to like think about the state of the world or the economy or work culture in America uh-huh. or any kind of that awful shit. So usually we'll be like, "Well, welcome to Walmart. Touch the void," you know, like that mm, kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it just it like it deals too much with Ralphie's like professional failings and. And mm. like, uh, it's like this. This touches the void too much. This yeah. is not a relaxing time. This is not the fantasy I want right now. Exactly. So we've we've been calling it the voids miss story. I mean, again, Christmas Story <laughs> One was is is a very <laughs> incredibly fucking cynical movie too. Oh yeah, so with like, a, it was an ad. Drink your oval tea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you'll shoot your eye out, and then at the end of the movie, he shoots his eye out. Yeah. And like everybody is just constantly suffering slings and arrows in that film. Like, yeah. Nobody's having a good time. Everyone's miserable. They try to keep it going with like the extended fantasy sequences that Ralphie had as a child Uh-oh. only like as a well, grown up you can't up, have that as an adult and then you just look like fucking, fucking Walter Mitty yeah you look like Doug <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> just <laughs> that you're gonna be the next school show come to school Skeeter <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> Doug was awful but he doesn't deserve that <laughs> no in real life it would be Roger Klotz he'd be like I got an AR funny <laughs> hey funny I got a gun in my basement <laughs> <laughs> no, Ro- Roger. Roger is the one that grows up to be uh, like an adult that does a school shooting. Yeah. Oh no! Uh, oh, because oh, he, he's popular in in school. So yeah, like, yeah. No, everybody hates him. Everyone hates Roger. Yeah, everyone uh, thinks he's a jerk. Except oh, for his one I, friend with the eyes on top of yeah, each other. He, like, he, I thought he was like a popular bully. No, he's not. He's he's like an asshole bully. Everyone's like, shut up, Roger. Oh, Speaking okay. of bullies. The uh, uh-huh. the Which bully makes Doug more pathetic. Mm, yeah. The bully character Scott Farkas, who like in the the first oh, Christmas yeah, story, Scott, yeah, yeah, Scott Farkas. He he makes a, a reappearance in this one. Guess, see if you can guess what his job is. Trash man. No. Uh, um. A crypto no. seller. It takes MLM. place in the seventies. Oh, it's oh, okay. Um, um. Then he is a limousine driver. He is not. Uh, garbage man. No, I already said that. Oh, um, garbage man. No. Garbage man. Garbage he's, band. Garbage he's boy. Neither, he is neither of those things. He's a police officer. Uh, and I'm okay. like, bullies grow up to be cops. I'm not sure you are realizing the message <laughs> that you are. Uh, you, you're right, but you're not uh, yeah. right the way you want to be. <laughs> or are they? Yeah. The point that you think you are making is not the point you are making. 
Uh, yeah, so that's that's Voidsmith story. Um, Voidsmith story. I'm, I'm trying to remember if there's anything. It's it's okay. I am a cynical asshole who can't feel joy. So watch the movie <laughs> if you uh, just want a lighthearted fucking time in the good spirit in which it was made. I am I am like a jaded piece of shit. So like <laughs> I have a acerbic taste on any <laughs> everything I watch. So mm-hmm. I'm being way too harsh on this movie. It's probably fine. Be right, but. Beer I can only get holiday cheer by watching the the Hallmark Christmas Channel version of a Serbian film. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I I go home. I put Christmas music on and I mute uh, the battle scenes from Gettysburg, and that is how I. <laughs> That that is that is how I get into the holiday spirit. I, um, I saw White Christmas oh! for the first time ever. I never done saw White Sister, Christmas. That is my family's favorite Sister. Christmas movie. Yeah, and then Maddie showed it, and I, I thought it was uh, you know the the usual Maddie effect where Maddie has this old timey movie I'm gonna watch. I'm like, ooh, this is gonna be a disaster. Let's go. Yeah. And then, and then you watch in, it. In it's classic great. fashion, I watched it. It's great, and I had a really great time. And I'm like, Maddie, I'm glad you showed me that movie. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> we were watching the, the 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 Bing Crosby. He's got the big ears. Yeah. He's got <laughs> Very big flappy ears, and he flops them on stage. Don't and... worry, if the Germans bomb us, you can take cover under my ears. If the Germans bomb us, ba 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 boo, ba 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 boo, I'll just smack him with my orange sack. My That's sack of Valencia orange. oranges. <laughs> and I'm gonna croon him a song, and I'm wearing a thong. Ba 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 boo. <laughs> so, no, it was it was a good movie. White Christmas is good, and then we watched Muppet Christmas Carol, which is about. I, mm. Yeah, I dare you to watch that movie and remain jaded. That is the no, no. It's, I will, I will absolutely go on record saying that a, a Muppet Christmas Carol is uh, better than a, a human Christmas Carol. Yeah, and it is objectively the Christmas movie. That is a good one that I will never poke holes in. That's a, we should be watching that one. That's the one we should be watching instead of these others that are goofballs. Get that Christmas <laughs> sure. Get the get that Statler and Waldorf floating up scaring me when I was four uh, with their chains <laughs> and their ghost appearances. We're Marley and Marley. That's a good song. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a banger. It's a fun, That's a. it's a very good movie. I highly recommend it. And I'm trying to think of other good Crimbus movies that won't like make you stare into the void too deep. We saw, uh, we saw Jingle All the Way. Yeah, but that's a that's a void staring movie, but in like yeah. a, a, a fun way. Yeah, yeah. I like, told Lisa that I watched just that all the time. on the edge of like almost too like <laughs> almost too infuriating. Yeah, yeah. But, like just manages to skirt by and still remain funny and good. Yeah. And then also Arnold going, put yeah. the cookie down! It's really funny. <laughs> the bit with the mail bomb was really funny. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's actually a bomb? Can't believe these people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that was a fun one. Um, let's see. The, I mean, any yeah, other... We gotta watch Jingle All the Way too with Blair the Cable Guy. Oh, oh. No, I forgot that existed. <laughs> We're going to have us the best Christmas you ever done seen. Get her Christmas done. Fill my stocking up with Prado sack. I'm going to fill my stocking with Prado sack. And by stocking, I mean Esophagus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Ugh, that put an, an image into my mind of like Larry the Cable Guy, like uh, like unhinging his jaws to swallow like like an ostrich egg size pill Prilosec. of pr- Prilosec. Prilosec. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say he like unhinges his jaw and like like makes his mouth go bigger, and you can see that his entire body has been filled. With Prilosec pills, Ew. and it's only revealed when he pulls his mouth just down to reveal suit. like the pile inside. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an animatronic framework filled with Prilosec pills and sawdust. I, I'm a neural net processor, a learning machine. I have over eight gigabytes of data inside my brain. Get her done. <laughs> I choose to use them all for blue collar comedy. <laughs> Larry Mnemonic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good. Oh, that's funny. The best Christmas movie ever, Larry Nebot. <laughs> oh, that is good. <laughs> that is really, really. We just watched Johnny Mnemonic uh, not did? that long ago, and the whole time, Lisa was like, "This is already better than Cyberpunk." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of things are better than Cyberpunk. Yeah. Unless it's Cyberpunk Edge Runner because it uh there's a naked okay. lady in it. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is okay, but like I don't know. I'm refer to my previous comments about being jaded and cynical. Yeah. Um I mean, you know, guy, you preach to the choir, man. I didn't fucking watch it. I just uh there's a naked lady in it. That's it. Mm. 
That's about it. There's frequently naked ladies in anime. <laughs> there is. That's true. <laughs> but this one's just like unabashedly naked. She just hangs out nude around people. Hmm. Nudes it up. When when we visited you guys, uh, you guys had had it on. And I swear, every time I like glanced over at the TV, it was like a shot of somebody running on the bridge. Yeah. And like we were there for like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> you sure it wasn't just Netflix auto playing like the like uh, a stinger reel, basically? I don't think like, so. You know, like when you go and select a show, but you don't watch it. Oh, yeah, I it hate that. Shit. Has, like, well, that, that, that that'll that usually looks- have like UI over it. This was just just the show. Oh, oh my wa well, UI. <laughs> so we also watched a Christmas movie that is a very old Christmas movie called It Happened on Fifth Avenue. Uh-huh. And it came out in 1947. That sounds familiar. It's the one where um, there's some homeless GIs who are newly back from the war, because it was 47, I guess. Mm. Yeah. And they end up... Uh, I forget how they make the acquaintance of this dude, but there's this... this uh, oldish, refined gentleman who just lives in like rich people's houses. He's like a professional house guest, and uh, Is he a garden gnome. He, pretty much, he just like figures out when the rich people go to their winter homes in Florida and just like moves into their mansion for the okay with, without their knowledge. Without their oh, knowledge, okay. Uh, I thought they like they were hiring some guy to to be a guest. Like, no, that's, no, that's some next level rich shit. He does this without their knowledge. Okay. And, um, but, ba- and basically, but he doesn't like steal anything from him other than the food that he consume. Like he tries to keep his consumables to a reasonable standard, but yeah. just generally enjoys their luxury and their absence because they have so much money, they're not going to miss it, which is a valid fucking take. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And this this elderly this gentleman somehow makes the acquaintance of these homeless GIs, invites them and their families in, and then this girl who was on the uh, on the run, f- who has run away from boarding school, who is actually the secretly the girl who is the daughter of the family that owns the mansion that they're all chilling in, mm. and she's undercover, and mm. uh, she doesn't like let anyone know that she's the daughter da- that this is basically her house that they're living in. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, she falls in love with one of the GIs. It's very very fucking forties and very very like. Oh boy, old culture values. Oh boy, like yeah. what? They, they move. You met someone of the opposite sex and looked at each other. You had to get married in these times, yeah. and it's it's like that's something I really liked about um, White Christmas. Yeah, is that um, the the goofy Bing Crosby's goofy friend and our our main lady's goofy sister. Mm-hmm. Both of them have a really good chemistry together the whole film. Yeah, and like. It fucking works, and, like, I actually like watching these two together. Like, fucking take notes on this couple right here. Yeah. This is how you do a good couple without annoying everybody. So... Ugh, it's really good. That is true. That, 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 that Some of that stuff is... is um... Sorry, my brain died for a minute. That's there. fine. <laughs> uh, so eventually, somehow... I Larry Mnemonic's f- brain over there. I forget how it happens, but the, the, the dad of the rich girl, who is the owner of the mansion, and also like supposed to be some kind of Rockefeller-like uh, richest man on the planet... Daddy Warbucks? Daddy Warbucks type, somehow finds out about all this and is coerced by the daughter to like pretending to be another homeless guy that she finds <laughs> and living undercover in his mansion and there the, the, so one thing i do want to say about the happen on 5th avenue is that a lot of the writing and the humor holds up really? it's a fucking funny movie huh even at this old yeah and there are a lot of jokes about the um the homeless the ostensibly homeless man seeing this like the, the, the fat old guy who's moved into his house wa- swanning about the place in his clothes chiding him for not cleaning up after himself in his own house <laughs> and it's really funny yeah and like but, but it gets to a point where like the like all of these characters attempts at like getting to know one and uh, one another better or like having a romantic relationship or any of this stuff are often hampered by um Aloysius T. McKeever, who is the name of the the professional house guest guy. Uh-huh. Like, he just like appears out of nowhere all the time, like comes into people's rooms. And he just and... bursts into them in a big flying surfboard and goes, Are you in or are you out? <laughs> yeah. And he just like chides them for things. And I'm like, you fucking can't do anything in this house without this mincing old bitch coming in and yelling at you. <laughs> <laughs> So how does everybody learn the true meaning of Christmas? Uh, Everyone learns the true meaning of Christmas when eventually the uh, rich guy has a change of heart. Uh, cause that happens in real life. And so, so what happens is the GI dudes 
are trying to place a bid on this, like, so I guess the army is selling one of its old, like, training camps that they just don't need anymore. They're selling it for the land. And they're mm -hmm. like, if we bought this land, uh, we could build a bunch of cheap houses there and use them to house other homeless GIs like us. And, like, let's let's put a bid on this uh, property. And it's like, turns out that the Daddy Warbucks figure is putting a bid on the property because he wants to put a fucking skyscraper there. Mm. Ah. And so there's a bidding war going on. And because the land is uh, originally, like, a steep price, but it would have been affordable for the men. Mm -hmm. But, like, they face unexpected resistance from the this guy who keeps bidding on it and raising the price. From Daddy Warbucks. Yeah. From Daddy Warbucks. And eventually, the Christmas miracle happens when Daddy Warbucks has a change of heart, uh, succeeds in buying the land, and then basically tells them, I'm going to give it to you. Um, but he so he does this by summoning them to his office and uh, they're like, uh, we have an appointment with this rich old, you know, with basically uh, our generation's Elon Musk. Uh, like, we're going to go to his office and we're going to give him what for. And they get in there and like the chair turns around and it's the homeless guy that they've been chilling with for yeah. months. And, oh my like, God. They're like, holy shit! <laughs> you know? And he's just like, how's it going, boys? I'm just going to give you the land. <laughs> and it's pretty funny and it's nice and it ends happily and it's a cute movie. Okay. Yeah. But that, that, okay. It, it, you know, if you can get past the, like, things are different back now. And also the <laughs> fact that the only black character in the movie is, is the chauffeur. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Dude, um... And he has one speaking line, which is, yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's that's definitely something you just gotta get past with watching all them old movies, is yeah. that, like, literally the entire fucking institution was racist as hell, so yeah. like, everything's white as shit, if you can just get past that, acknowledge it for a second, and be like, ha ha, uh, please don't do this anymore, and then just, you know, <laughs> watch the rest of the thing. Um... But, like, a, another Krimbus movie that is old that I saw just last year was It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, I actually saw that movie. Merry Christmas, you beautiful It's a Wonderful couch. Life. Merry Christmas, you beautiful cow. It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Leaf. I've still not seen that. It's Really? Okay. It, it's good. I, I, okay, here, I will say this with a caveat that I did not go know going in. The mm. movie is, like, three hours long. Cool. And yeah. the movie's, like, three, f like, five hours long, and, like, four hours and 59 minutes of that runtime is not the part of the movie <laughs> that it, it is famous for. Right? Yeah. The whole movie is set up. <laughs> like the whole movie is set up and it's good setup though that's yeah. the thing it's fine it's compelling setup it, it it's all okay. pays off mm. yeah very well yeah but it is a very long movie yeah you just so if, if you're if you're Speaking of white christmas is really fucking long white I christmas was... is long it, it passed by pretty okay you know what it would be half as long if they didn't have so many foppish dance numbers in it but at the same time that's <laughs> half of what makes the movie so great yeah so... sisters sisters <laughs> get ready to hear that movie five times my uh my aunts do that all the time at Aww, christmas when they... that's kind of cute yeah <laughs> and then they go sister sister and the tia tamara maori they come out there, they have a good old time. And then they do sister act and pretend to be nuns. And then they, <laughs> and then they do Juana Man and pretend to be a good movie. <laughs> Juana Man just immediately makes me think of Charles Barkley. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's the next episode that's going up. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, basketball stuff. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Look, it's Santa. Don't you hear them jingly bells? Wow. Wait, no, that's just the sound that happens right before a chaos dunk. It ain't a tear, hit the deck! Now even you know I am a menace. I hand you the secrets to save the entire human race and the entire universe.